put a poll out about a month ago asking folks, would you rather pay more for a John Deere or Kubota, really they're kind of the, the premium as far as price point goes, brands that are out there, versus more of a value brand. Um, you know, it could be a Coyote, could be an LS, could be the Summit. Um, a lot of the other, well, they're just cheaper brands in general. Incredibly, two thirds of respondents said they would rather pay the premium for the John Deere or the Kubota over one of the value brands out there. Now, personally, I don't care what tractor you get, but I did find that to be almost a humorous response because I can't tell you how many times with tractors or tractor attachments, folks are saying, these things are overpriced, they're too expensive, I'm gonna make it myself, I'm gonna find something used, I'm gonna refurbish it, whatever it is. Folks are always looking to save a buck, yet when it comes to this poll, folks want to spend more money. Is that because of good marketing or are there other reasons driving that? Now, I've been using one of those value brand tractors for about a year now, so I've been putting actual time on it. Um, I'm gonna give you my take on that, on, on how that's worked out so far, but then also go through a lot of these comments and the, the reservations that folks have about buying a value brand and uh, maybe the reasons they're gonna look for a more well-established brand or whatever it is. And again, this is not to sway you in one direction or another, it's to give you the information and help you make a more informed decision and maybe a different perspective that you hadn't considered already. All right, Big Cool says, definitely buy an established brand and pay for it. I come from a construction background and one thing I've learned from purchasing equipment is the most important thing is dealer support and parts availability. I have Kubota and John Deere dealers all over the place. Never seen a dealer for any other brand tractor around. So a lot to dissect there, all right? And that's, we've talked about this before, right? There's so many John Deere and Kubota dealers around that they're not getting to every corner in the country, but they're getting to most corners in the country and you're probability wise, more likely to have one of those near you than you are any other brand. There's no doubt about that. And I do think that that's very important. And uh, using Summit as an example, they are not nationwide right now. And intentionally they are going regionally to only expand in areas where not only they are going to sell the tractors, but where they are also set up to service the tractors too. They don't, they don't want to sell you a tractor in an area that they can't service it. That's not their goal. And so they're, they're building that out strategically. The flip side of that is it doesn't matter if it's Summit, John Deere, Kubota, Coyote, LS, Mahindra, whoever, there are good dealers and bad dealers all over the place. And this pandemic has taught us that, uh, well, it's leveled that playing field a lot. And I'm, I, I don't, I'm not saying this to put down the dealers around me in my area, but the service sucks now. And it's because they can't retain good technicians. It's, everybody's in the same boat. We're all struggling to have good help on hand, getting parts. It's so rare for them to have parts in stock. They have to order almost everything. And I don't, I mean, that could be the, um, the Polaris Ranger that I have, it could be the Ford trucks. This stuff isn't stocked. And it's like, you're still hanging on to this pre-pandemic mindset of that's realistic and it's not. It was gonna be four weeks for me just to get my John Deere tractor in to get service that was having a hydraulic issue. Four weeks, that's a month. This time of year, a month to not have a tractor just to get it looked at, let alone back up and operational. So that's not good service. That's the top dog, right? John Deere's the top dog. I think a lot of us would agree. And that's terrible customer support. And so all those folks that, that use that as their reasoning should probably go talk to their dealers and ask them what kind of lead times there are on parts and, and getting things in for service because I know it's not just in my area that this is occurring, it's, it's all over the place and it's every industry. So, you know, there's, I'm not saying Summit's better or not, I don't know. Folks out there that had the Summit tractors, let me know. I haven't had to have service calls done on mine and so I don't really have an idea or understanding of what that's like right now. But in my opinion, you know, that was a big selling point at one point and I really don't think it is so much anymore. Not to say it's not gonna get back to that in the future, but present state right now, it's not a selling point. Now, part of this is longevity as well. Can you get parts 20 years in the future for some of these lesser known brands that uh, maybe have just popped up in recent years and some, some of them go away, some of them are bought out by other brands? The interesting thing is there's, it, it depends on, on the year, but there's anywhere from 15 to probably the low 20s in different tractor brands that are out there. But there's only six or seven actual tractor manufacturers. And so a lot of these companies are using the same common parts between different models. And you guys know that, that this is based on the Solus, okay? And it's made by a manufacturer, ITL, that produces thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of tractors, all right? And a lot of this stuff is gonna share commonality. And so even if a, 
a brand was discontinued, it's not like they just take all the parts for that, put them in a dumpster and light it on fire, right? There's still gonna be parts out there, but on top of that, there's also gonna be other brands out there utilizing these same parts. And LS is a really good example too. LS and New Holland in the compact world, they're, they're virtually the same thing. I mean, not every detail across the board, but so much so that I had an LS tractor come in with a New Holland manual with all the parts in there that matched up line for line, okay? So it's the same stinking thing, and this goes on more than you would realize. Basically, think about all those old farm tractors that are out there right now, still from the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s, all the brands that are no longer in production, but you can still get parts for them. Why would that be any different for modern day tractors now? You have to do an honest comparison. There's a reason why these tractors are cheaper, not as much steel, and the steel isn't as good. Compare specs, research models. Every brand has models with known problems. I also would consider dealer reputation. A lot, of, a lot of stuff in there, all right? Some things I agree with, some I don't. Dealer reputation, of course, is critical. Good and bad dealers, like I said, all over the place. There's some I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. Uh, there's others that I'd go to forever. Now, he talks about every brand can have models that are good and bad, and that is certainly true. And I've made a, a few videos on that topic. And unfortunately, John Deere and Kubota and maybe it's just because, I don't know, maybe they have more models. Maybe it's because they sell so many tractors, but they're known for having some very problematic tractor models that are out there and also not stepping up to bat for their customers to take care of those problems. The John Deere 2320 and 2305, as far as I know, John Deere's never stepped up to the plate to help out all the hundreds, maybe thousands of customers that had driveline issues. I had one myself. It was gonna be over a $4,000 repair to get that done. Information wasn't in the manual on what to do to service, to grease, to maintain the drive line, and it sheared off inside the transmission housing. A complete rebuild was required. Kubota, the B3350, huge emissions problems on there. Eventually, years and years and years and years and years later, it sounds like Kubota did step up to the plate, but that's too late. At that point, so many customers had already had to grind through the repeated service calls, downtime with their tractor, extra expenses, and then a loss selling their tractor to get into something else because their tractor was unusable. Now I do know that Cub Cadet had an issue with, gosh, what was it? Their five or 7,000 series compact tractor as well. And that's honestly one of the only lesser known brands that I can think of that had any kind of a, a significant issue with one of their models. If you know of any other models though, for any brand that's like, not just like your tractor had an issue and nobody else's does, but if it's a repetitive thing, put a comment down below so that folks know what to avoid. But I'm saying this because reliability can be an issue with, with anything that's out there. And sometimes you do have a problem child of a specific tractor and it doesn't mean the whole brand is bad. And other times it is because there is a bad model that the manufacturer needs to address with customers and put out service bulletins and correct the problems that it has. But that doesn't mean that John Deere and Kubota are immune from those same issues as lesser known brands. And then talking about you know, less steel, cheaper steel, whatever else, those kind of an inferior type comments that are, that are out there. I don't think that's true. I mean, well, this tractor is, if not the heaviest, one of the heaviest in its class. So there's a ton of steel in this machine. They're not chintzing out on that. In fact, it's more like an old school farm tractor that has all that extra weight, unlike these new lightweight tractors that are out there all over the place. But then you're gonna also find extra value, you know, and I'm, I'm staring at the Summit. We're looking at it, but you have these R14 tires that are standard. They're a premium, upcharge tire with basically every other brand out there. Liquid ballast included in there. These are American uh, wheels on here, okay? I'm made in the USA wheels. Other things standard too, like a rear remote, the grapple ready hydraulics, self-leveling loader, mirrors, steps on both sides. Y you get the idea where they're not chintzing out. They're, they're giving you more value. And a lot of that is potentially because, well, because they aren't as well known, right? And so they don't have the big marketing budget that's out there, um, which also bloats just the overhead and the price and dries everything up over time. And also if you are a more established brand like John Deere and Kubota, folks are just willing to pay more as this poll suggests. And I'm, I'm talking to you as a guy that loves tractors, right? I've had dozens, well, more than that. I've had hundreds probably of John Deere tractors and sold them. I love John Deere tractors. I, I love my Kubota M4 tractor. I don't love my JCB telehandler, but, or my teleskid, but it is, it's growing on me a little bit. We'll see as, as time progresses. But I love the Summit tractor too, okay? So I, I've got the premium, I've got the value brands. I, I, I mix it up and I, look at that. We have these, these crazy Japanese mini dump trucks that are in here now too, owned by Toyota. Diatsu is who makes them. Point being, 
I just like equipment, man, and I'm just gonna try out different things. And if something doesn't work or, or it sucks, I'll let you know. I've, I think I've let you guys know enough times now when I don't like something like the Kubota BX, I get ragged on that all the time. I still don't like it, okay? But I wanna give you my honest opinion on it, whether you wanna use it or not, and whether you agree with it or not. All right, I do wanna talk about fit and finish a little bit here too, because I do like nice things, all right? And uh, we went to the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville back in February, and if you've never been, it was, it was so cool. And you got to, well, not every brand wasn't there, but most brands were there and you got to sit on and touch and feel and, and just visually see all these different um, tractors that are out there in the compact tractor world. And there is a big difference in, in fit and finish between various brands that are out there. So it depends on, on how high that ranks, right? And so there was, I had an LS one time that was an absolute rattle box, all right? And I don't know if it was that specific model or not, but you're not gonna sit there and, and see how these things shake around everything. You can't turn them on at the farm show, but um, it's the same kind of principle, right? You want something that's built rigid and sound, I suppose. But some of the trim details are very basic on uh, some models. There was a, a bad boy model cab tractor that it didn't have any armrests on the seat. It was like, I don't know. It was it was almost like it was unfinished. It was, <laughs> it was that plain on the inside. There was, uh, I don't know. It was it was kind of strange. But so not to say that it's functionality wise, which is why you're using a tractor, right? You're using it for the functionality of it, not because it's like a, a Lamborghini or something, and you want every little knob and dial that you can get. Sometimes that can be more problems too. But it was just odd, especially in a sea of kind of decked out tractors. That one stood out as a bit of an anomaly. And then there was one of the little red subcompacts there. Oh man, it was Massey maybe, maybe it was Mahindra. I, I feel like it was Massey though. GC, I think it is the series for the subcompacts. And that one also, that one wasn't very impressive, you know, just from looking at it. And again, not using it, but if you're, if you're going on first impressions and looking at something, I wasn't very impressed by that tractor. Um, I don't know how much cheaper that one is compared to some of the nicer models in the subcompact world. But at first glance, I would be like, eh, I don't know if that one's worth paying for or not. That's just a, an off the cuff remark. Looking at and using tractors all the time, it kind of stood out to me as a, I don't know. Now, one of the brands I really liked down there was Coyote, K-I-O-T-I. -I. And they've been around for a while and they're making Bobcat tractors, I believe right now, at least for a little while longer. And um, Daydong is, is the, uh, the, the parent company name. They've got a lot of really nice tractors. They, they had one very comparable to my Kubota M4. And the fitting, well, I think Chris can agree, it didn't look as, as plush as, as the Kubota M4. Um, not to say it was bad, but it just seemed not quite as nice. But, I mean, a very nice tractor still overall. Their smaller models as well looked really nice. Um, a solid fit and finish, maybe not the absolute top of the line. But again, this doesn't always matter. But it is a first impression, especially when you're not using one. Uh, I've used some Coyote tractors. I've always found them very capable. Tons of folks out there have used Coyote, said the same thing about it too. And I don't know of any models to avoid with Coyote, but perhaps you guys do. So I use these videos as conversation starters, right? For the questions that I'm asked all the time. You just constant email submissions of what tractor to get. And I just, it's overwhelming, right? And so read the comments in this video, read the comments in the other videos too. And while it's, it's strange, most folks, voted that they would buy the John Deere, the Kubota in this video, but most comments don't support that. They support buying a reputable dealer, okay, which could easily be a, a more value brand out there or a more budget-friendly brand out there, um, or they support it in general just buying the cheaper tractor because that extra however many thousands of dollars they saved can go towards the attachments. They can get the tractor and the attachments for the same price as a more expensive brand. I think for me when I'm making a big decision on that is comfort level, right? I, once you know, you know, and you don't have to look anymore, you can you can look out there to try to get, have your mind changed, you know, and move in a different direction if you want to, but just stop at that point. I mean, you can overanalyze every situation and once it clicks, it's the right answer. Just do it and, and then pull the trigger. I mean, it's, otherwise you'll wear yourself out, man. I do it all the time with trucks, with ATVs, with trailers, with, Shopping for a new house that we've done for years. We backed out of more deals and we almost bought half the houses in Kalamazoo. I mean, that's that's just what, how my mind works is <laughs> it's just a problem. You gotta make a decision at some point and there's always gonna be a trade-off, okay? 
there's going to be a cheaper tractor or you know maybe the other one has a different feature that you really wish you had that you got to pay extra for at the end of the day a really good way to look at this too is you're not buying a tractor for a year most of us you go into it thinking you're going to have this for 10 20 30 years you know this is going to be a tractor that's going to last a long time and so if you break it down by 10 years or 20 years or whatever and it's a thirty thousand dollar tractor you know three grand a year over 10 years or what is that is that ten ten dollars a day ten bucks a day that you have it something like that over over the course of 10 years it's you can break it down and make it make more sense you know and most of these tractors are pretty simple machines there's not a lot of complication to them the dpf or the the regen systems are about the most complicated thing on there until you get to the big farm tractors that none of us are talking about now what i will say is that no matter what tractor you get we've got the tractor attachments to help you out so you get the tractor it's just the start of everything right you have to have the tools to go along with it to get your projects done so if you need something for the three-point hitch or the front end loader we'd love to help you out we sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country every day of the week and we have about 700 videos now but we have a good chunk of videos helping you figure out the right tractor for you and so check those out as well and just it's going to be information overload but you'll make a better decision that way and then check out the rest to see how to use those tractor tools or maybe how not to use them too i want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time stay safe we'll see you soon yeah.